How was it? Amazing. Amazing. And he looks like Terminator? Or no? Like a pack. Oh, you have a picture. That's from behind, actually. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> So, yeah, um, like the last talk tonight on Gutenberg stage will be um, Daniela Kuka from the University of Ars, and she's talking about a social interaction experiment called the social quantified self. So please welcome her on stage. Thank you. Uh, thank you for waiting or for coming back after the robo drama. And now I will uh, present a project that we are working on uh, since a few weeks or month, actually, since April 2012, uh, which is called uh, Social Quantified Self. And uh, before I start to get uh, deeper into um, the concept, I just give a, a short mood introduction. And I hope that you can also hear something. So what you've seen there was just a small uh, time lapse from people are playing social quantified self. Um, we did this recording at um, the annual exhibition of Berlin University of the Arts and uh, we uh, captured the playing session uh, with the people. And the project has been developed in the context of a special interest group which is called uh, Human Machine Persuasion which is uh, quite uh, important uh, to know because all the, the whole concept of the project uh, is dealing with um, how computers uh, brings people uh, to do things they would normally not do or how, would, uh, how computers change the interaction between people because they are using computers uh, for uh, structuring the communication process between them. And Social Quantified Self is one, actually the biggest project of the special interest group so far. It, uh, the group has been founded in 2011 and we are uh, a bigger team uh, which consists of uh, students from the course um, Communication in Cultural and Economic Contexts. Uh, you can see them here on the picture. So this is the team of students which has been working on the project together with us for uh, the last few uh, weeks and months. And when you uh, remember the short video I show in the beginning, so you may uh, maybe ask, so what is that, what you are showing there? Social quantified self, maybe there are some, some words in it, you know, it looks like a game. What is it? Is it a parlor game? So there are peop uh, people playing together and there are some typical game elements. So. Um, 
I brought it with me. You can uh, see it uh, in the end of my talk if you want. Um, it's just so some, show some elements that you see that it really exists. So we, get, we have some playing cards, we have resources, we deal with scores, we deal with rules. So everything looks like as it is a game. But uh, from our point of view, it is actually more. So it wasn't uh, intended to be a game. We uh, started it as being some kind of social experiment. Um, but that is also, not ha uh, also only half of the truth. It is also some kind of prototype. Um, it's a prototype of... Uh, kind of social media that does not exist in uh, this way at the moment, but we are trying to anticipate a social network as it could be in the future. And uh, because it's still not there, so we can't uh, just observe it, we tried uh, to find a way to simulate it. And so we decided to do it in, in a game-like um, environment and with uh, game-like materials because we wanted to involve uh, lots of people from different backgrounds to uh, engage in this experience and so to find uh, maybe a, a very shootable description it is uh, one could say that social quantified self is a game-based social interaction paper prototype so we try to simulate a social network completely out of paper or as you can see here out of uh, cardboards and we tried to um, get people acting as they were using it as a social network. So people have a, have a profile and they behave as they were using a social network as they are at the moment using Facebook, Google Plus or whatever they use. And there's one difference between the social networks we know today and the social network that we uh, conceptualized with uh, SQS. We reduced current social networks uh, um, so we reused one feature um, and this feature is uh, the editable profile and we deleted this feature and we replaced this feature with another feature which is called uh, frictionless quantification so we call it frictionless uh, quantification and uh, I don't know how deep you are in the actual discourse about uh, the quantified self and fl frictionless sharing and so on. Maybe I give one sentence for each uh, just to um, give you an impression. So we tried to blend together the developments of qu uh, quantified self and fl frictionless sharing. So there is at the moment a quantified self community emerging throughout um, Germany and throughout the whole world actually, which are trying to track themselves. So they are using uh, some uh, tec uh, technical tools, but also uh, doing, doing it manually uh, to track data about themselves. So they are tracking what they eat, they are tracking how they sleep, they are tracking uh, data about their body, they are tracking their management of financial stuff, they are tracking their communication habits and stuff like that. And, uh, of course, the promise behind is to learn something about oneself that uh, one normally would not know. So, by getting all the data, you can uh, get an access to yourself you, would, uh, you do not have in your, in your uh, daily life because you, you, can't, uh, you don't have a sense to, to know what you have eaten throughout the whole week and how healthy it was and stuff like that. And on the, on the other hand, there is... Uh, development which is called frictionless uh, sharing which means that you just share what you're actually doing so Facebook uh, installed a protocol which uh, allows you to um, track what you've, you are doing uh, across a different website so you can share what, mu what music you're actually listening to you can share what uh, articles or books you're currently reading you share what locations you visit and and so on and so on and we try to make these two things uh, absolute parameters of a social network. So, which means that we first assume that everything you do can be tracked. And second, that everything that is tracked is also getting shared. And this uh, is set uh, by default, so there is no uh, decision by the, uh, by the user whether he wants to, uh, to share something or not. It is, uh, everything gets tracked and shared, and this, it is no 
longer necessary that one say, oh, I visit this location and I think my community should know it, so I post it. No, this uh, happens automatically in, in our uh, conception of the social network. Of course, we had to reduce the complexity, so when it's a game, it should work um, with uh, very uh, simple patterns. So we decided to track people's activities in four areas of life. So we decided to use health, business and social, uh, which of course uh, can be discussed. There are many more areas that could be relevant. They are uh, interrelated, so it's very hard to divide them in uh, autonomous categories, but to make it easier to play, we assumed um, that these are the three areas in which uh, we track the behavior. And what is important for us uh, is to, um, uh, to, to focus on uh, the behavior change uh, behind a social network that is conceptualized like this. So there are some quotes which I just uh, show for a moment that are saying that uh, the sharing of data is not uh, a big privacy issue anymore that we are um, uh, that we are trying to um, avoid so these these quotes show that sharing of data can get a social norm and that we are learning to accept that we are sharing more and more data with more and more people So everything you do now ends up in a permanent record. This sounds like uh, some kind of dystopian uh, version of, of the future, but uh, as we see, we try to, to simulate something like that, um, and we can see effects that, are, that can be observed uh, already today. Very often, um, this, the, the approach of Facebook was compared to the panopticon. I think most of you have heard the analogy, um, the digital panopticon, which uh, goes back to Jeremy Bentham in 1787, who said that the perfect um, architecture to observe people is to put a place in the middle where the watchman can see um, the spaces where all the other people are, and the people that are observed do not know when they are getting observed. So, and this has the effect that you are possibly permanently watched but uh, you are behaving uh, as you were watched, even if you are not watched. So it's a very economic approach to um, observe uh, and direct people because they think they are permanently watched, but uh, even if they aren't, so you just need one person in the middle or you even need no uh, person in the middle because the people can't see if there is anyone in the middle. Um, just by this architecture you can achieve that uh, people are behaving as they uh, were watched uh, permanently. And this is a kind of important uh, approach for the social quantified self because uh, we are not dealing uh, with privacy issues anymore. So um, we are focusing on behavior change. So what uh, is it doing with us and with our social relationships when everything what we do uh, is uh, publicly and uh, so is published publicly and is um, is uh, yeah, is uh, is in a loop of constant feedback. So we are not just sharing it and don't get an get an answer. So we always get feedback from the community. So it's uh, not just in the panopticon where there is a hierarchical st structure. Uh, it is. Uh, we also have the back channel, so we get feedback from the community on what we are tracking and doing all the time. And we are asking um, what uh, happens under these conditions when we build a social network that is taking um, the frictionless quantification as uh, the basic principle, and which then means that you cannot claim your personal image anymore you have to live it so uh, you when you want when you want to change your digital profile then you have to behave differently so you can't just decide what you post or you can't uh, make good narration on what you post um, everything gets posted so when you want to change what's getting posted you have to change your daily activities 
And so and we assume that we maybe need a new identity, uh, identity model to describe uh, identities in, in such uh, uh, environment. And we found one that is quite old from the 15s, which is um, shown here, which uh, assumes four areas um, of identity, the open arena, the blind spot, the unknown, and the facade. And all of these are... Um, only the open arena is known by others and known by the self and the others are just um, so the blind spot is just known by um, the others the facade is just known by oneself and the unknown is known by none of them and so we assume in social quantified self that the three areas that are not public are not uh, important anymore so we have no role play anymore, so we minimize the facade. We have instant feedback, so we minimize the blind spot. And uh, everything can be measured, so we minimize uh, everything that could be unknown. Um, of course, there are uh, resulting in, uh, other problems, such as what, uh, what about the non-quantifiable? Is there getting a new uh, blind spot or a new unknown about the people? So what is about the things that we cannot quantify? Will we only ex uh, be described um, with data that uh, can be tracked? And what is what is with uh, with the rest? Is there a rest? And with social quantified self, we are asking how will we decide and act under the condition that everything we do is visible and part of an instant social feedback loop. And second, how will we commit to the logic of the system as soon as we know what it's honoring and what is sanctioning? So, and by the simulation, we are developing features that allow us to act as if we have a structure like this. And I just show you some images from the process, which, which was a very long one. Uh, because uh, we uh, had to try out very different um, models and features. And we do it with very simple material. We just started with some uh, stack cards and uh, how, what you can see here and with simple Excel um, calculations for the first presentation uh, in, uh, in May when we make our, made our first workshop. Then uh, the whole game was very simple. It was just by cut it out paper and by uh, we uh, had written the features by hand, so the like button and stuff like that. And we, we played uh, it with uh, at, uh, approximately 15 people and the learnings from that we used to uh, refine uh, the model we had uh, so far. So as you can see here, there were the profiles uh, in the first stage and then we had a very intense phase in which we are trying to um, reformulate the concept and where we are trying to uh, design the stuff. So how uh, can the people start to identify uh, with their profile? How can they, they get uh, involved in the process? So we... We played it very often in such open and uh, just handmade, uh, with such handmade material. And to give you an impression about that process, I just give you a small insight in the uh, production process. Das ist ja eine Logik, klar, die kann man hinterfragen. Aber man will sie, das ist ja das Säule, das ist ja dieses, im Jahresanfang will ich mich verbessern. Das ist, wir sind in, das ist von der Logik her, das ist unser Spiel so konzipiert. Und wenn du dann noch in der Gruppe bist, das ist ja die, die Logik. Wenn du einmal oben bist und hast dann noch ein Netzwerk geschaffen, was dich dabei noch unterstützt, dann ist es ein Kinderspiel. Dann ist das. Dann ist das
So this actually was the preparation phase for our second workshop, which was uh, at the C base, where we tried to play that game with members from the social, from the quantified self community, um, to see what uh, they are saying about it. So this was the last step before we get uh, into uh, the production of the game, and we did it with two uh, teams uh, at in the C base in July 2012 and this was uh, the first moment when, when we thought okay it, it is a game that we can produce it so this is um, the actual state from uh, which resulted from this uh, paper prototyping and you can see here now one of uh, the shots from the sea base um, experience where we had uh, freshly produced the, the game material. And I have another video which shows you um, the function of the elements in the social quantified self. So that help you to understand a little bit more about how the game uh, works and how the logic is.
this actually is the end of the game, so people are calculating their, their score after they played at least two hours was our experience uh, so far. And um, I show the sequence because uh, you all can see that the people are getting really emotionally involved. So there are some dilemmas we produced in this game. And this is something I would like to um, uh, make a, bit, a little bit more concrete. Uh, what are the dilemmas in, in the game we uh, produce here? Which uh, starts with that you have an empty profile. So and you imagine when everything that you do is uh, going to be tracked and your profile has just been generated out of that uh, what you are doing and you are tracking all the time, then you start with an empty profile. So there are no friends, there are no groups, there is no performance uh, in uh, your when you just have the kickoff of your profile. And of course you have uh, something like a target profile. So how do you want that the people see you in your community? What is the profile you want to have? And we are working with this target performance card so people get uh, some kind of uh, goal they are playing for during, during the game. People can also choose an own one if they want, but they will see that it's getting more and more complicated as more as you try to be good in all areas. So you can't be good in business, social and uh, health. So you have to focus on something or at least on two. So the, the more you try, the more it gets complicated. And so the first dilemma is that you have to bring your present profile to the tar uh, target profile. So you have to el uh, eliminate the gap between what you're actually seeing and uh, that what you want to have people see about you. And um, of course, we do not produce data uh, in reality, so we, should, uh, we would have to use uh, tools for that. So we simulate it, we are using uh, small stories. So we encoded the data into stories, so people are telling, oh, yesterday I was jogging with my friend, and, but my mother was angry because she wanted me to call her and I've forgotten, something like that. And this, is, uh, uh, this encodes the data, so uh, people get a stack of cards on their hand and they have to tell the story, so this ma is making the stories uh, going to be public. So they are just telling to the people who are sitting on the table what they are doing and they get feedback from the people on the table. And this uh, happens in, uh, in another dilemma because um, there are people on the table that have the same goal uh, as you and there are people on the table that, has another go uh, that have another goal. And uh, it's very quickly people are, are uh, figuring out the similarities and are starting to, working, to work together. And we built in a mechanism that um, brings people to build their network uh, to support their own goals, so, so you have to uh, have a specific composition of friends if you want to uh, benefit in some categories more than in others. And this uh, brings you to the problem that there are some friends that you don't want or that you can't accept um, even if you like them. So we uh, work here with stories uh, again. So, and you have some problems like uh, I can't take another health friend because I need more business friends, but maybe the health friend is, is your cousin or your mother or something like that. And uh, you have to accept or refuse the friendship request publicly so you can get um, uh, yeah, punished from the community at the table by uh, refusing uh, friendship requests. So you get the dilemma um, that uh, your friends not only are the, the people who are supporting you in your performance in that game, and that you have to decide what you are going for. And this brings uh, me to the third and the most important dilemma of the game, is that you don't only have to push your performance. It's not enough to be good at uh, health or business or social. You have to um, raise your social reputation. So. Um, you need both. You need a good performance and you need a good social reputation. And this reputation you acquire while collecting friends and likes. Um, and you also can get dislikes, which are uh, then calculated against uh, the likes. So you have to increase your social reputation. And so you get the dilemma that your target profile can be against uh, the group dynamics. And this depends on what people are sitting on the table. So we have situations where business activities are disliked by most uh, of the people at the table. 
or the other way around where social activities are disliked by most uh, of the people at the table and then it is very hard to win this game because um, the people who are focusing on the same performance are getting up very quickly and you don't uh, find a partner who is pushing you with likes and uh, uh, within a group which multiplies uh, the benefit you get from your activities and so you you fell out of out of the system so just because the logic of the system says you have to uh, be good in w at least one area of life and you have to uh, raise your social reputation uh, you have to behave like this and if you don't behave like this it is impossible uh, to win this game so uh, the main dilemma is uh, to bring together uh, to, uh, the social reputation and the personal goals and what is interesting about that uh, is that when everything is uh, visible and everything is going to be shared and feedbacked by the people uh, of your community then uh, this may be, uh, affect what you are doing and what you are not doing so in our experience people quickly figured out which activities are good and are accepted on, uh, by the people at the table and which are not and they are trying uh, to behave um, differently and they, they are starting to differ from their target behavior because they don't want to have the pressure from the people on the table. So they, they collected activities that uh, would have been good for their performance, but they didn't play them out because uh, they, they knew that they will get many dislikes from, from the other people. And we also had uh, people uh, had one person who started to re uh, reformulate the stories. That was something we didn't uh, uh, ex uh, expect it before. So we were sitting there and said, oh, who has written that story? We couldn't uh, remember. And he uh, was uh, just uh, telling stories. Uh, he was simulating that he is reading it from the cards, but we, but he actually actually wasn't. So uh, he tried to uh, manipulate the people uh, on the table by uh, making better stories uh, around his data. And I don't know who of you knows um, the very old Ash experiment. The Ash experiment uh, is an e experiment the Ash about experiment group conformity. The Ash experiment is one of psychology's oldest and most popular pieces of research. A volunteer is told that he's taking part in a visual perception test. What he doesn't know is that the other participants are actors and he's the only person taking part in the real test, which is actually about group conformity. Please begin. The experiment you will be taking part in today involves the perception of line length. Your task will be simply to look at the line here on the left and indicate which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. So, for example, if you The actors right have been told to match the wrong lines. The volunteer will be monitored to see if he gives the correct answer or if he goes along with the opinion of the group and gives the wrong answer. In the first test, the correct answer is two. Uh, one. 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 Two. One. Once again, the correct answer is two. Three. 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 The Ash experiment has been repeated many times and the results have been uh, supported again and again. We will conform to the group. Again, we're very social creatures. We're very much aware of what the people around us think. Uh, we want to be liked. We don't want to be seen to rock the boat, so we will go along with the group. Even if we don't believe what people are saying, we'll still go along. One. 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 Group dynamics is one of the most powerful forces in human psychology. So there are many other experiments like this, uh, which uh, people are looking in, a, in the same direction in an elevator and something like that. And what we are asking uh, for our system is what if uh, lying and role play gets impossible? So when this is the case, people can't act as if they share an opinion of the group. So they have really to incorporate the behavior because otherwise we would realize it from their data. 
And this uh, brings up uh, to some uh, basic behavior change mechanisms that we are trying to simulate uh, with uh, the so so social quantified self project and uh, which we are trying to develop further. So what I've shown uh, so far with the concept is uh, just the beginning and we are focusing on three issues I uh, finally want to mention because I think that they are important for um, uh, for the development of the social semantic web and uh, for our behavior in social networks and uh, of course also in our daily lives because everything is uh, is going to be merged so there is not the difference anymore between going online and being offline and uh, the first uh, behavior change mechanism um, I want to call uh, self-persuasion so you are what you measure which uh, means uh, in, a, in one sentence that under the condition of total visibility and instant feedback uh, the self-optimization gets part of the open arena and so you start to change your behavior, behavior and your social interaction. So um, what is interesting in, uh, in that point is that not the data itself gets persuasive. So this is what I meant before by saying it's not about privacy, not uh, the, the data it's there, it's shared, it's public, okay, but that is not what's making the data persuasive. It's uh, how it gets interpreted and evaluated by the system and how this affects how the people behave. And there are some uh, very important patterns used uh, in systems like this, like uh, self-monitoring. So I accept that I get uh, surveyed by, by the system because it promises me uh, a closer connection to myself. And this is uh, some kind of uh, social norm that maybe was impossible a few years ago. So the, the technology promises us, we tell you about yourself. And it's not about uh, you are getting more autonomy about yourself because you have your own data. It's about delegating some kind of uh, monitoring to technology or to other people uh, in the community who are using this technology. And by using uh, tools like uh, here are shots from uh, eatery uh, and also from cloud uh, by using uh, such tools that are making vis visible something that we can't see uh, or recognize with our own senses we get insights in the unknown sphere uh, of the self so this is what I meant before when I say that um, the three other areas of the self come some kind of obvious because we are shifting the unknown into the field of the open arena by uh, using tools that are some kind of making visible and interpreting things about us we, we don't know by ourselves. There's another pattern I want to mention, which is uh, social proof. So when everything is shared and everything is visible, you can al always compare to others. So you see, um, people uh, who are like me did the same, so I can't be wrong, which uh, helps you to give you insights into uh, that what other people know about you. So you get uh, rankings and ratings from people who are using the same tool. This is again a shot from uh, the eatery. So you are capturing what you are eating all uh, the time and the community rates how healthy it is what you ate. So you get uh, permanent feedback uh, on and you also get a gap between what you think and what the others, other think. So this also could be described as a mechanism to put something from the blind spot area to the, to the open arena because, uh, of course, also the feedback is public. So other people see what feedback you get on what you ate, on what you ate uh, during the day. And closely related is social comparison. So you uh, quickly feel under pressure in case you see that other people are performing better than you. And this uh, can be quite normative in, in the case when we use statistics. So, uh, as you can see here in this example, so this is, uh, of course, a, a good world example where you, they are trying to uh, avoid people from producing uh, so much uh, carbon by, by booking flights. Um, but you uh, Im immediately uh, f feel bad when, you, when you're trying to book a flight and you see, okay, I will burn 23 uh, trees now and these are 23 or in this case 18 uh, trees more than uh, the average uh, people burns uh, so you you have some the feeling that you are not you are not normal you are some kind of um, overacting in that sense 
and uh, Cloud is using uh, another uh, technique of uh, social comparison here. So you see the cloud score of uh, uh, celebrities and people you know, and you can uh, rate wherever you stand uh, in that um, in that relation. Or there are also other mechanisms uh, as they are used by Eatery, which is shown in the right shot, which is quite um, just the statistic data. So there is just written 80, uh, 38 percent of the people ate uh, better than you, or in this case, uh, you ate better than 38 of the uh, 83 of the people. So this is uh, immediately raising pressure to know uh, who you, where you are, uh, in comparison to all the other people who are using the service. And uh, in that sense, this is some kind of lifting the facade. So you. Uh, always had the feeling who, uh, uh, who you, how you perform, but when you see the data, then it, it could be some kind of, uh, it could be some uh, kind of surprising because it's quite different from what you, what you thought you, uh, how you perform. So the eatery uh, massive health study found out that most of the people think that they eat much more healthy than they really do. Because the, uh, so people give the first rating of their food, and then 40 other people give the rating, and in most of the cases, um, the first rating is the highest, uh, the best one. So and so you always think that that uh, your food is healthy, and the 14 other people say, "Oh no, sorry." And um, this mechanism is uh, shifting uh, the data about yourself from from the facade to uh, the open arena. Um, so. Uh, because you can't just uh, claim what you've done or how healthy you are or something like that. It's going to be measured. And what we are asking from that uh, thesis is when self-optimization gets something like a norm, what will happen to people who can't or don't want doing uh, uh, better as they are actually doing or just do another course. So when all these mechanics, mechanisms are automatically built in the social networks we are using, so uh, are we then forced to, to use them and are we then uh, forced to commit ourselves to the structure of the system? Which uh, brings me to the second uh, thesis which is important about uh, the future of the social quantified self project. Um, some kind of uh, digital habitus. Um, so you are a dabla is uh, is a is a term which is taken from the cloud matrix. So cloud is trying to um, measure the social influence of people, and then they are giving some kind of uh, identity. So I I have it here just a moment. So here it is. So you get a score which is calculated by a formula and then the score indicates where you are in the matrix so and it's not just oh you are maybe 25 or something you get an identity you are celebrity or you are dabbler or you are explorer or you are activist and uh, they are described so they there is something inside the descriptions that gives you the feeling oh maybe I should I should change the behavior so uh, especially in the low performer area which is uh, the debla and observer there is written so uh, maybe you're just starting uh, or it's it's just your style but hmm, so so you don't feel good if you are located there so you get uh, the impression that you should improve your uh, social activities and uh, you should uh, post more and write more and use Twitter more and something like that which is quite interesting because uh, the system just is just tracking what you are doing on, on Facebook and Twitter so what what does it mean so is all your social activity uh, described by tracking what you are doing on Facebook and Twitter maybe this, it's just the beginning maybe they are uh, permanently involving other platforms but uh, it's showing that you are getting some kind of me uh, measurable identity and I go back what I've jumped before um, so we get some kind of formal models of identities that change the people's behavior. So as you can see in the open graph uh, is another example. So you are just described by some metadata, by some relations. So the things you like, the locations you visited, uh, the movies you watch, the friends you have are uh, enough to model um, your identity. And what we found out in uh, some other social experiments, uh, which this is, was also a student project, well, is that uh, metadata that is describing people is never just descriptive. So it's not just saying, oh, this is, this is um, 
reproducing what I see. So the metadata we give to people um, is uh, some kind of prescriptive. So it's uh, saying who someone are and who someone will be. So it gives identity. So this was a project where we asked people to make pictures in public space and tag the people with uh, some kind of vocabulary they think that uh, is suitable for the image and the result was that there are quickly reproduced stereotypes. So there are typical objects, typical um, typical clothes, typical age groups, uh, typical hairstyles, something like that, that was very stereo, uh, stereo uh, typic and just uh, reproduce what uh, we have uh, learned from our very top level social experience. So uh, as you can see here in, in this example. So and by just giving some tags, you are prescribing the identity of, a, of a people. And this is uh, interesting when you think about um, the, the filter bubble issue. So if you are prescribed by uh, some text which will structure everything you will see in the future from your digital system, then it is very important how you are described from the system. And uh, yeah, this is another uh, shot from uh, Cloud where you can see that they are really reaching real life impact with that score. It's not just, oh, there's some kind of digital score and uh, who cares? There are some stories uh, around uh, the internet where um, people are telling stories that they didn't get a job because their Cloud score was too low and something like that. Um, and so it, it seems that uh, such data can have a real uh, life impact. and. Uh, what the question uh, what question results from is uh, uh, from that is uh, what kind of social system evolves under the condition of quantified identities so Foucault once said that the classification of people is one of the strongest uh, technology of power we have so uh, you can see it by just simple examples so uh, if you use a binary uh, um, words, the, health, the healthy one and the ill one, the native and the stranger, the friend and the enemy, those who are inside and those who are outside, you uh, immediately have some kind of hierarchy or some kind of uh, stigmatization of, of one part who is not uh, the normal part. And we are asking, uh, yes, I, I actually are raising lots of questions today, uh, uh, who uh, has or should have the power to classify uh, digital identities? And this is something we are uh, experimentally uh, research uh, in the social quantified self. Just to give you an impression, this is uh, a model so oriented on the cl on the cloud matrix. We tried to uh, get some digital identities out of the social quantified self activities. So you imagine you are playing the game. There comes a score out. So uh, let me say 43 or something like that. And then you are looking in this matrix and you see uh, where you are located. And what we are interested in is um, how people feel about this classification. So are they surprised? Uh, so did they expect? what's coming out there and uh, how uh, do they accept that? So, and uh, the question uh, the other way around is, so are they uh, starting to change their behavior to achieve uh, another digital label? So, um, this, is, so this is because uh, I call it the, the second uh, behavior change mechanism because we assume that people, sorry, skip this, because we assume that people are trying to um, change their habits and interests in order to achieve a desired classification. And this brings me to the last point, so what is a desired classification? So um, there is some kind of real-time normalism, uh, so you are probably not as good as you think, which uh, means that when you have some kind of patterned identities, uh, such as the matrix uh, suggests, then you, of course, simply get some kind of uh, unnormal patterns. So it is easily to, de to detect who is not uh, statistically in, in the field of, no of uh, normality. And this is, of course, this is a very old discourse. So statistically made uh, normality has been researched uh, for uh, decades. But when we think that we now have uh, the big data, so we can produce normality in, in real time. And of course, we also can uh, identify those who are not uh, in, in the area of normality. So, 
who are inside uh, the bubble of normality or outside. And what is interesting about that is that algorithms are producing these unnormal patterns. So uh, we are just uh, experimentally trying to formulate some kind of unnormal patterns for the social quantified self where people are get some kind of stigma because they didn't perform well. And we, uh, we do not care about the circumstances. So when someone fails because uh, he, he, he get an event card, he, get a he, he got a child and he have to adjust his target behavior or something like that, um, and his performance wasn't bad, this doesn't care because we only uh, measure, what, so we only count what's, uh, what's measured in relation to uh, the target behavior. And we, uh, we are observing how people are reacting to this kind of uh, abnormal uh, stigma, uh, this kind of uh, stigmatization. And you can see it when you are looking at the technology discourse at the moment that they are emerging uh, some kind of uh, a series of patterns resulting from uh, technological innovation. So there are uh, sensors that can detect um, your movements uh, with the iPhone where you can detect diseases, uh, Parkinson, for, for example, which is a very good application. So don't, I don't want to say that everything is evil about that. That's not, I just want to raise some questions we should think about. Um, more in, uh, so more critical is the second pattern, which is... Uh, which I call the crime pattern. There are some algorithms that interpret um, from the behavior of people on, on stations if they are potentially some kind of terrorists. So they uh, track their movements and they track how, how, uh, they, um, how they behave, how they are uh, styled, and how they are nervous and something like that. And from this pattern, they can predict if someone might be a terrorist or not. And we are asking, so yeah, what, where are we going with that? So can we have, so the Debla pattern is from cloud, so, but where can we apply it to? Can, can we have a kind of a political patterns or behavior patterns which are describing our efficiency, um, our behavior in social relations, um, our uh, IQ or something like that? Can this be distillated out of our data? And if yes, what is, are the consequences uh, for um, our digital lives? And so, yeah, this is uh, not just uh, some kind of vision. Uh, as I mentioned before, the eatery, the massive health study started with that, with uh, you are properly aren't as healthy as you think. So, it is, and it is very easy to apply this, uh, of course, on other areas of life. So you can easily uh, apply it to uh, communication habits, uh, diligence, uh, sexuality, something like that. And so uh, the last question, which uh, results from uh, the third uh, behavior changing mechanism is uh, what kind of norms are going to be established by using uh, some kind of uh, patent identities made out of the data we are uh, producing. And uh, what of course results is what uh, is the normality of, of uh, some kind of guilty pleasure. So we are trying to in uh, uh, include um, uh, problems in, in the social quantified self where you have uh, some kind of stigma which you, which you can't get rid of. So that you, that you learn how it feels when you have something that uh, uh, reduces your performance but, but you can't get rid of it and you can do whatever you want, you will never get out of the pattern. So well, this, this were a lot of uh, questions and thoughts which were uh, maybe uh, somehow widespread, but uh, I just want to give you an impression what uh, thoughts are relevant for us in, in uh, the uh, special interest group, uh, human machine persuasion, and which are uh, accompanying us by uh, the development of the game. So we are going on with that and are trying to integrate uh, new features and are playing with more and more people. And uh, I thank you for uh, your attention and uh, the summary is very short. It's just to give you a think about that again. So, and if you want to know uh, more about that, 
you can visit our webpage, you can write us an email, you can ask us questions, and you can visit the social media week, which will actually the next uh, location where we will uh, not make a talk. That was the first talk about social quantified self, where we make a workshop again, so you can uh, in, uh, play with us. Uh, so. Uh, if you are interested, just look at the web page on the social media week. So I think there is, isn't something online, but you can keep it in mind uh, in case you are in Berlin at the time. So uh, if I, I, I think I were very out of time. If we have time for questions, I'm, I'm here. If not, so... Just a comment. Uh, I have heard that Japanese uh, society is very much about uh, group conformity and Western society is building on the individual and innovation also in behavioral patterns. Um, I don't know whether I have a question, but if I have, then how do you see this? Because this is a huge stuff, influencing all of our lives and changing society in big, how uh, to say, size or measures. Yeah, yeah I think you. cultural differences are a, are a very important issue. So if we would produce such a game or a simulation for uh, Japanese people, for instance, then we uh, should rethink about that, of course. So, um, but this is also something one could find out by doing maybe a cross-cultural simulation. So maybe it's interesting to let people play together from dif different cultural backgrounds and maybe someone say, whoa, what's different from today? It's, it feels quite normal. And the other would say, whoa, what a pressure. I, I, don't, want, I don't know how to behave. And also there are different cultures in different companies, like Google is fostering very much um, individuality and innovation. Also Facebook, I have heard here today a talk, so this is also very difficult, how to make it and still be confirmed to the company's values, etc. Just a comment. Yeah, I think as uh, re uh, rethinking uh, the process of uh, the game development, I think we are overestimating um, the intensity, how innovative and independent and individual we are. Uh, I think that uh, most of our behavior where we say, oh, I do it against uh, the mainstream, is uh, always something that has a, um, a kind of affirmation to another side or to another group that exists. So it's not just uh, saying uh, there are those who are going uh, with the mass and those who are quite uh, individualist. We, are, we have some smaller clusters of uh, those who are maybe differing from the mainstream, but again needs their social uh, cloud or their social community. They uh, get the social reputation uh, from. So it's a smaller group of mainstream. Yeah. So I have a um, question that what is really important for me because uh, uh, I wasn't sure are these people forced to um, yeah, be in the social community or are they free to join? Because uh, I think there would be no one joining this because um, there's so much personal input um, and yeah and so much role playing games that are. Um, I mean, it's it's our history. We always do role playing, um, and it's influenced by not only culture, but um, yeah, history and the way we were raised and friends and and groups we join. So I, I'm not sure if these people are forced. Um, I think it would only go down. So I don't think they would um, always try to be better than other people. So the, if they're forced, I think it would be another influence. So yeah. That's my question. Is there uh, uh, if they are getting forced to be part of this network? Uh, okay, so um, maybe, so we don't think it as an alternative uh, model. So sometimes there will someone launching SQS and then everyone is migrating from Facebook to SQS. So we are thinking it as uh, some kind of um, uh, 
cluster or density of uh, features that we think that will be built in the existing social networks anyway. So, or that, that, that could be. Um, and uh, so if we look at cloud, no, no one asks us if we want to have a cloud score. It is just there. So you just need to look, uh, log in and uh, look at it. No one asks you if you want to have one. So, um, and Mark Zuckerberg was, uh, was describing it quite well in the quote when he was saying, so when we are inside a system, there are some things we are feeling uncomfortable, some things we are saying, oh, I would never do it. But then they come slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly. And then uh, we, uh, then we are trying to, um, uh, uns gewöhnen, um, we're trying to learn to accept it slowly. So it's not just uh, we are ad admitting to a system we are at the moment would say, oh, I would never. So it's just evolving over time and it's, it's shaping the barrier of things that we accept or not. W uh, was it the answer to your question? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so uh, you, uh, you're studying it. Do you think the process that it's going in that direction is it a good thing or uh, is it a bad thing or do you think you can't can't really answer that uh, i'm a little bit happy that that you are asking that because i was afraid that the talk was too normative in in terms of wow look at the very bad uh, development and how uh, dangerous everything is so uh, i i don't think that we want to uh, communicate with this project that social networks are going to be bad and that we have to uh, protect our data and some, something like that. So um, maybe the method of the game is a good uh, answer uh, to that question. We are trying to bring people into the situation to feel it. So how does it feel when you are in a, si or how could it feel when you are in a system like this? And then everyone uh, should decide uh, by themselves if he, uh, yeah, if he have uh, uh, troubles with that or if he think yeah wow it's it's not so bad uh, but the context of the game it's not real life so you have nothing at stake if you play the game so how how can you study it this way um, so of course yeah it's it's not a quite uh, it's not a scientific experiment so we are not making some kind of uh, empirical analysis on what people are saying we are just uh, doing the experiment and we are making some kind of recalls where we are uh, talking with the people how they feel it, what were uh, the um, critical points in, in their experience and we are learning from that and rebuilding uh, the system uh, with other features and so we are also learning something about what are maybe good and what are not so good features for a social network um, of the future and uh, what we think is that yes of course it is not a uh, um, scientific uh, valid uh, research project um, but I think uh, that people are maybe acting more authentically in such a scenario than if we would say, oh, we're making some kind of user testing. So we have sketched out the uh, uh, social network of the future. So use it and uh, I look how you behave. So I think that will uh, change very uh, strongly how the people uh, behave. And because they think it's a game or they are engaging in a game, they are... Um, in, they are accepting the mechanism for the very first time. They are not saying, oh, I would never do this anyway, so I don't need to try it. Um, they are just inside it, and then they realize, uh, oh, oh I, I, I get in the trap. So they um, are suddenly doing things they would uh, haven't uh, uh, said in the, in the beginning they, they, that they would do it, just because uh, the process has um, produced such behavior. So an example is uh, the competition. So most of the people would say, oh, I would never uh, collaborate with one here from the table to, to knock the others out. So, but when you, when, you, when you feel how easy it is and when you feel, oh, I'm getting uh, closer to my, uh, to my goal of the game and maybe you win, um, then it gets some kind of uh, dynamic that uh, no one really uh, can avo avoid. And the people are very quickly uh, in the thinking of, uh, of the game and are um, surprisingly affirmative um, to a system like this. So as you mentioned, if you present it as a, as a prototype, everyone would say, oh, I would never join, so uh, why are you doing this? Uh, everyone would say, uh, oh no. Um, but when you experience uh, it as a game, then uh, the barrier is lower to get into it. And um, 
we uh, were sometimes surprised uh, about the reactions of people that uh, how they start to dislike people just because they are doing something that uh, was not uh, good for their own um, uh, performance in an area of life. So there are very uh, competitive situations evolved. Uh, not be, uh, because we said, oh, it's a competitive uh, simulation and you will get, uh, you will have to beat the other. So this was uh, developed uh, automatically. Hello. Last question. Last question. Thank you, first of all, for your presentation. Very interesting. Um, did you notice some differences between your real life relationship to the people who, with whom you play? and uh, playing the game. It means, uh, for example, that you develop uh, sympathies or antipathies playing this social game, and you find out another different point of view of that person, seeing what kind of uh, uh, reactions they do. For example, getting a, a special... Um, uh, uh, per whatever. Uh, I, I hope I get the point. Uh, I try. Um, what, uh, is, what was uh, very strong is the difference between when people are playing who know each other and who are in a relationship and uh, when people are playing who don't know each other. So um, when people are playing who know each other then their real life relationships, relationships are completely overlapped with uh, the stories they experience in the game. So there were situations where someone was saying, so there was a, a boy with his girlfriend they are playing and the boy's target behavior was uh, to get a, a business high performer. And he was doing, um, he was walking all the time and he was skipping meetings with his girlfriend. He was reading it from the story cards and she was disliking him all the time because she says, ah, I'm your girlfriend, you are never coming home and something like that. So, and this, this wasn't uh, re relevant for the game. So her target behavior was completely different. So they, they weren't competitors, but uh, she couldn't uh, uh, separate the situations. He was, she was so emotionally involved that he was so strongly focusing the business uh, target performance that uh, she always wanted to give him feedback, even if it wasn't relevant for her performance. And if you have uh, people playing that are don't uh, knowing each other, then it, uh, the process is more open. Then uh, people are trying to orient in the beginning who is uh, who is who and who is having uh, maybe a similar target behavior, and then they are building cooperations. And uh, what you also could uh, see very strongly uh, in this uh, experiments is that. Uh, in, from the moment on, some people get into a group. They are some kind of uh, micro-community in, in the bigger community. And they are uh, very quickly acting against uh, the others on the table. And when there's happening something uh, by an event card or something, that someone has to uh, fall out of the group or has to build a new group, then it is uh, completely uh, different uh, from before. They are getting very strong relationships by just playing for half an hour together and just and then being member of another group. So they are, oh, you are going to, to them, yeah, just go, but so it's some kind of uh, very, um, I don't know, there are some kind of strange dynamics on the table when, when people are leaving groups and are joining other groups um, because they get to know each other very, very quickly. Would you call it? Sorry. I'm really sorry that I have to interrupt the great discussion, but my technicians have been up for almost 13 hours now, so so we need to stop. But maybe you can continue the discussion without any technical equipment. Um, how can I register to play the game at the social media week? Do I have to? Yeah. Do I have to register? The question was, is it loud? Do you hear me? Yeah. The no. question was how you. The question was how you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Okay, try this one. The question was how you can register for the social media week, and I actually can't answer this yet because we are uh, at the moment figuring out uh, what uh, date it will happen. So I think it will be on Friday, uh, so the 28th, but I still don't know uh, for sure. 
and I think uh, that the Social Media Week has some kind of conventions how they are doing workshops and how you have to register. <laughs> okay. So just go on the website and uh, from the Social Media Week, and I think you find details there. Or write us an email, and we uh, let you know as soon as we know more about that event. Okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you.